Hey friends, welcome back to USMLE team. Today's topic is um, amiodarone, and this is a very important drug for. Uh, uh, this is very important and you should know the information about this because this is important for USMLE step 1, step 2 and step 3. For example, in a step 1, they might ask you which of the following is the commonest side effect of amiodarone, right? Or which of the following is the side effect of amiodarone, like this. Okay, for a step 2, they might give the long history and ask you the diagnosis okay whether it's was like uh, they give the history that a patient has a problem chest problem mi or everything anything like that and they say that now she has developed swelling of the limbs sinus sign and symptoms of uh, hypothyroidism and they ask you which of the following drug could be responsible for this this is how they ask you in the usmle ck okay in a step 3 usmle step 3 they will not uh, they will not ask you directly they will confuse you like they, they tell you I will ask you this question and you have to answer me through the comments that's a question for you okay the history of the patient is uh, a patient uh, who is uh, taking uh, amiodarone okay she develops a uh, sign and symptoms of uh, hypothyroidism in short I'm telling amiodarone she's taking and she has developed uh, hypothyroidism which of the following is the best next step tell me are you gonna test for TSH are you gonna stop the amiodarone drug okay so are you gonna stop it temporarily permanently or do you want to check the levels of amiodarone in the blood this is how they ask in the what do you call uh, in a step 3 or something step 3 okay so this is very important let me jump on to this before starting this I would request you to subscribe to our channel that is all on law and please tell your friends to subscribe okay we need your love we need your support Okay, uh, it is an um, antiarrhythmic agent used for various types of cardiac uh, dysarrhythmias, both ventricular and atrial. Amiodarone is categorized as a class 3 antiarrhythmic agent uh, uh, and prolongs the phase 3 of the cardiac action potential. Um, the repolarization phase where there is a normally decreased calcium permeability and increased potassium permeability. It has a numerous other effects, however, including actions that are similar to those of the antiarrhythmic classes 1A, 2, and 4. Okay, so just try to remember though it lies in this group, but it has a similar effects of the groups that are in 1A, 2, and 4. Okay, okay, now the important points we are going to discuss here amiodarone shows a beta blocker like, like and potassium channel blocker like actions. On the SA and the AV node uh, increases the refractive period via sodium and the potassium channel effects and the slows intracardiac conductions of the cardiac action potential via sodium channel effects amiodarone chemically resembles uh, thyro sorry okay uh, amiodarone chemically resembles thyroxine thyroid from hormones and its uh, binding to the nuclear thyroid receptor might contribute to some of its pharmacological and toxic uh, actions. Amiodarone is just like a brother of a thyroxine. So it can cause both the things. One is uh, overactivity of the thyroid or inactivity of the thyroid. So hypo and the hyperthyroidism. Now my question is which is most common? Hypo or a hyper? Tell me through the comments. That's a question for you. Ventricular fibrillation. It is used in the ventricular fibrillation. Treatment of a choice for ventricular fibrillation is electrical defibrillation. However, amiodarone can be useful in a shock refractory VF. In the arrest trial, uh, amiodarone was shown to improve the survival to hospital admissions when compared to placebo. In individuals who suffer cardiac arrest with a shock refractory VF, it is on the basis of this study that guidelines created by the amiodarone American Heart Association for the treatment of VF includes amiodarone as a second line agent. Our rest was not adequately powered to demonstrate survival to the discharge. Okay, though now the second use is ventricular tachycardia. Amiodarone may be used in the used in the treatment of ventricular tachycardia in certain sub instances. Individuals with a hemodynamic Hemodynamically unstable ventricular tachycardia should not initially receive amiodarone. These individuals should be de uh, should be cardioverted out of their unstable rhythm. 
So look at this, the, how they are used in the treatment of ventricular tachycardia. Amiodarone can be used in individuals with hemodynamically stable ventricular tachyarrhythmias, tachycardia. Sorry. In these cases, amiodarone can be used regardless of the individual's underlying heart functions and the type of ventricular uh, tachycardia. It can be used in individuals with monomorphic ventricular tachycardia, but is contraindicated in individuals with polymorphic ventricular tachycardia as it is associated with a prolonged QT interval which will be made worse with antiarrhythmic drugs. The other use as you know it is used in the treatment of uh, atrial fibrillation. Okay, the important thing is the contraindication. Uh, individuals who are pregnant or, uh, or may become pregnant are strongly advised to not to take amiodarone. Since amiodarone can be expressed in uh, breast milk, women taking amiodarone, okay? Um, okay, uh, okay. A woman taking amiodarone are advised to stop the nursing. It is contraindicate. Look at this point. This is very important since amiodarone can be expressed in the breast milk. Women taking amiodarone are advised to stop the nursing. So look at this very very important point. This can be asked in the US assembly examination. It is contraindicated in individuals with a sinus nodal bradycardia, atrioventricular block, and second or third degree heart block who do not have an artificial pacemaker. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Individuals with a baseline depressed lung function should be monitored closely if amiodarone therapy is to be initiated. So what is the side effect you see in, uh, in the lungs because of uh, amiodarone? A pulmonary fibrosis. They will get the dry cuff. That's very important. You should know. Okay, injection should not be given to the neonates because the benzyl alcohol it contains may cause the fatal gasping syndrome. Amiodarone can worsen the cardiac arrhythmias brought on by digitalis toxicity. Sometimes they can ask you on this. Not to be given with lidocaine increases the risk of acetal. So they, sometimes they can ask you in the USML examination that if uh, the patient was given and uh, they started to take uh, um, lidocaine with uh, amiodarone, which of the following complications you expect in this patient. So increases the risk of acetal, right? Okay, amiodarone is extensively metabolized in the liver by cytochrome P450. Uh, no need to remember 3A4, uh, they will not ask you like this, 3A4, 3A1, okay, like that, no. For USML examination or for AMC or MCCE. Okay. Uh, it interacts with the digoxin, warfarin, phenytoin and others. The major metabolite of the amiodarone is um, D-cethyl amiodarone, DEA, which also has anti-arrhythmic properties. The metabolism of amiodarone is inhibited by grape fruit juice leading to elevated serum levels of amiodarone. The interactions with other drugs are pharmacokinetics of the numerous drugs including many that are commonly administered to the individuals with heart diseases are in, in affected by the amiodarone. Um, particularly, doses of digoxin should be hard in individuals taking amiodarone. Uh, amiodarone potentiates the action of warfarin. Individuals taking both of these medications should have the warfarin dose hard and anticoagulation status measured as a prothrombin time and international normalized ratio, that is the INR, measured more frequently. The effect of the amiodarone in the warfarin concentration can be as early as a few days after initi initiation of treatment or can be delayed a few weeks. Okay, so the other thing is the amiodarone inhibits the action of cytochrome 4 4 P450, isoenzyme family. This reduces the clearance of many drugs including the following. Uh, cyclosporin, digoxin, flaconide, procanamide, cunidine, sildenafil, semovastatin, theophylline and warfarin. Remember these drugs, these are very important for your USML examination. Excretion is mainly by the hepatic and the biliary with almost no elimination via the renal route. The most serious reaction that is due to the amiodarone is interstitial lung disease, what I told you before, right? Oh, now the interesting thing comes here. Thyroid, that is the thyroxine and amiodarone are brothers. They are both a brother. Bro, right? Induced abnormalities in the thyroid functions are common. Amiodarone is structurally similar to the thyroxine which contributes to the effects of amiodarone on the thyroid function. Because of this, you see both under and over activity of the thyroid may occur on amiodarone treatment. Measurement of free thyroxine, that is FT4, alone may be unreliable in detecting these problems and thyroid stimulating hormone should be 
uh, therefore also be checked every six months corneal micro deposits corneal deposits are almost inversely present in individuals taking amidon longer than six months so just imagine if the patient is taking it for a two months or one month he don't have he won't develop the corneal micro deposits that's very important okay so try to look for the history in this patient how long he is taking amiodarone that's very important okay the gastro because the sign and symptoms of the amiodarone depends on the time how long he is taking that's very important okay gastrointestinal symptoms in the liver abnormal liver enzymes results are common in patients on amiodarone much rarer are jaundice heptomegaly and hepatitis low dose amiodarone has been reported to pseudo alcoholic cirrhosis okay skin long term administration of amiodarone is associated with a blue gray discoloration of the skin this is a more commonly seen in individuals with a lighter skin toes tones uh, the discoloration may revert upon cessation of a drug so sometimes in your assembly they can ask you which of the following side effect can be reverted back if the patient uh, stops taking anti uh, amiodarone so you should know which are the side effects that goes away if he stops Individuals taking amiodarone may become more sensitive to harmful effects of UVA light using sunblock that blocks UVA appears to prevent this side effects. Okay, uh, I'm sorry for that. Neurological long-term administration of amiodarone has been associated with the peripheral neuropathies. Okay, epididymis amiodarone is sometimes responsible for the epididymitis a condition of the scrotum normally associated with a bacterial infection but also can occur as a non bacterial inflammatory condition amiodarone accumulates in the head of the organ and can cause unilateral bilateral inflammation it tends to resolve if amiodarone is stopped gynecomastia can be seen when the patients uh, with uh, taking amiodarone okay these are the red side effects just they will try to confuse you if uh, because sometimes uh, they won't give you the simple side effects they will give you some uh, rare side effects so that you should know okay so that's why to try to read very well and thank you so much for watching my video take care